mic right there. Yeah, you're live. Oh, okay. Woo, that was a sneak attack. John and Colin warned me, but I was still talking fancy that. It's John and Rachel from the Ajaga Podcast, and we are joined with some very, very special guests, especially our friend Ben right here. And he's the reason that we are where we are today, which we will tell you. But first, as you know, when we do the Facebook Live portion, that's the behind the scenes of the podcast, where you can see all the fun and all the, the little things that we do while we're getting ready for the podcast for the audio that comes out on Monday, wherever you get your podcasts, or on Tuesday at yajagoff.com. So we are super excited because we are in the Lawrenceville area, and we have quite a few guests surrounding this place, again, because of our friend Ben. And we are going to uh, chat with Scott Harley and Howie Alexander, who are the musicians that we have today, but not until the end of the show. But at first, you get to hear them perform. So as you know, John always says, get your English muffin, get your coffee, do your thing, watch us, but then make sure you listen to the final copy on Tuesday. Right, Ben? Right. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. All right. Awesome as that, oh huh? Gosh. I feel like I was relaxed walking through Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. What I, what I love most, though, is that the ladies over here, I think it was April, said, you guys come with a musician or a band? band. Like, we're pretty lucky, right? If we could have them every week, that would be amazing. Yeah. But we're super excited right. to talk with them. So this is how we start the podcast, right? Do you know what le the letters MSRP mean? We usually hear it fast at the end of commercials, but Rory Conda takes them seriously since it means manufacturer suggested retail price. All that means is that they don't increase car prices to make a fast buck during a time of inflation. And instead, they sell cars and they build relationships. So visit RoraConda.com for all of your vehicle needs. And now we start the Yajagoff podcast from Open Up Pittsburgh. In Lawrenceville. So if you're watching, this is behind the scenes, and this is if you're listening to the podcast on Tuesday, you'll hear a bunch of interesting per Pittsburgh personalities saying you jag off. Yes. Uh, right. And then we say, this is the Jag Off podcast for John and Rachel. And if you're listening to the podcast for the very first time, we ask that you, one, subscribe to it in some way. And then two, if you're on iTunes, please leave a comment. Say, like, we're like kind of nice people. <laughs> <laughs> And if you have nothing nice to say, don't comment. Right. That's our theory. Yeah. No, we're always looking for constructive criticism. And we're always looking for another Pittsburgh story. So if you have one, kind of like Lainey, please reach out and let us know because we're more than happy to tell your story. First, though, you know, the podcast comes out on Tuesdays. That is our official blog post for a Tuesday. But on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're calling out Jagoffs. Even though we are known for our term of endearment Jagoff, like how have you been, you Jagoff? Once in a while, we have to call out the Jags, the ones who drive crazy, the road rage, the nonsense that happens, the ripped from the headline stuff that drives us absolutely batty that we can't believe people did. This was a good week for it because let me set up just one, right? The final one, Fridays. It was called Wrong Way on Purpose, Jagoff. Okay, do you want to know why? 
John and I knew that the McKees Rocks Bridge was closed because we were proud Pittsburghers that there was a movie being filmed on the bridge. So I think the news did a great job of letting everybody know. Right, John? We knew. Yeah, did. And then we forgot. It was all over we social forgot, media. Right. And we were driving um, on 65, and we were like, bleep, bleep, bleep. It's you know a traffic jam. We're going to be caught here for a while. John says, oh, no, I missed the California Avenue exit. I can't even bail. So you sit patiently and you deal, right? Yeah. No, no. This gentleman in a Jeep literally got off the ramp. There's an on-ramp that people would be entering. He did a three-point turn on 65 and went up. My face was like this the whole time because I couldn't believe it. He literally went up the on-ramp and I caught him. I got a picture of it. I blanked out all of the license plates and the people in front of us, but I had to call him out because that was a jag-off move. It was a jag-off in the wild. Scary. Right? It was so scary. Yeah. yeah. Caught. Thank God nothing bad happened. Right. Yeah, that ramp on example. 65, some people, when they get tied up, they back up the ramp and then go seen. California Avenue. Yeah. That guy, yeah, the three-point, and quite frankly, his three-point turn skills were on point. Oh. Yeah. I was yeah. a little jealous. That was part yeah. of it. I was a little right. bit jealous. And right. then obviously we also talked about John is at, is going to be in the David Allen Fashion Show, benefiting two nonprofits this year. They were on hiatus for two years, and David Allen is back doing his fashion show, benefiting Cuddles for Kids and another nonprofit through Stow Rocks, right? Steel City Impact, yeah. which yeah. affects where I went to high school, Stow Rocks. So I'm happy. I'm really not happy to be in it, you but are. but it, I, I just know that I'm probably going to trip going down yeah. the runway. Yeah. I, but maybe that's what makes us all go viral and we'll make lots of money. Okay, then we'll take it. Yeah. We'll take it. So. And we also had a couple of stories about uh, back to school and how the inflation has been crazy and how much I spent three years ago versus this year for three kids. Craziness. And then on top of that, we uh, uh, the guys from Fueled by Hops podcast and website posted a great Yajagoff clip from WTAE because oh, yeah. the, the reporter was doing a live shot after the Steeler game and total Yinzer guy comes up with his full glass of beer, looks at her, <laughs> stares at her, and goes, Go Steelers! Steelers! <laughs> and then looks at her and walks away. It's so typical. It was like, okay, this yeah. is somebody. Actually, he was old enough to be somebody's grandfather, so I hope grandkids were proud the next night. There you go. But anyways, that's what Jagoffs do. That's what Jagoffery is, as we say. This is the podcast, and we are at a place called Open Up in Lawrenceville, which is totally cool. The, but it's even more cool is the reason why we're here. So, Ben, we'll have you pick up this microphone, okay. and let's tell this story. We were at Pickles. Well, first, no, we got an email from Caitlin and Ben saying that they were interns at, place, at a place called Open Up, which we never heard about before. And they sent us a picture and said they listened to the podcast, listened to the radio, and we're like, Wow. That's more than just our family does, and that's cool. <laughs> so Ben shows up at Picklesburg, and Rach, you describe on video, rain. we'll see this, this sign, and it's a little wet because it got wet at Picklesburg. But it it's meant a little so smeared. much to us that Ben took the time to make it, and he presented it to us at Picklesburg. Yeah. So it is a little bit watermarked, and so we did give him some stickers because, let's face it, he's the Jagoff ambassador at this point. He oh. spreads good cheer because it is our mission for people to know that, again, the term Jagmon Jagoff is a term of endearment. And I'm so he brought it. There you go. Yeah, he, he is showing the stickers yet again and a smaller version of the little certificate that he made for us because we are so privileged to know him. Yeah. So Ben and Caitlin, thank you so much for letting us know about Open Up Pittsburgh. How are you? I'm good. Yes? Maria. Yes. Yeah. Tell me what you love most about coming here. Actually, you know, what I know is Open Up is uh, the kind of the safe space, uh, not only like a calm, but also welcomes everybody to express the very thoughts or active as they can. And uh, well, something, okay, I lost to say, you know. Uh. <laughs> I know I keep on the tone now. <laughs> now, on your poster that you gave us, it says craving playful. Uh, fresh news without dirt. Tell us about that phrase. Actually, because you know the Yajagov actually is not really like the like the create cre like some creativity about some like new. It's not. I mean, in other words, not like the new words. It's kind of because that's kind of like a slam for somebody. Who's yes. Really foolish, that's right. 
But so that's why I needed to add some like kind of like a mission. About he's making us better. You know, he's like, he's <laughs> yeah. like, they're not bad people. <laughs> uh, because why would people's burgers when they just I just like attract the people to send me some like a sticker say when they say Jacob, why you see my Jacob? I say no, 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 no. your job is news. And I remember what you guys say, like, say, you don't go sleep early. I mean, I really repeat, say, okay, so seven to nine weekday, don't go sleep earlier. Seven <laughs> to ten oh, weekdays, yeah, don't right. go to sleep early. That's, That's so exactly funny. right. You are the best, Ben. We are ben, so lucky to know We you. should do a pop quiz. You would probably get 110%. <laughs> sure, he wouldn't sure. know, yeah. but he would. We would I'm not so know friends. the answers to most of those questions. Well, f what's your favorite thing about coming to open up? Favorite thing, I mean, open up is kind of very encouraging. Like uh, I'm kind of an intern for design. Like uh, I mean, I mean, exactly say I'm promotion, so I can be, I can come up. Sorry, you're fine. I'm come up with uh, like many uh, crazy ideas for promotions. Like uh, okay, I, I also like uh, to like to make some video for them. They kind of interactive. Like uh, they play the put some music from what I listen radio that music. There you go. So okay, <laughs> I love it. Well, you're going to be excited because guess who's walking in right now? Look who's Monica! Monica! Oh, hi, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's sweet. That's to our meet Monica you. welcome. We mm. always give Monica that. Monica, kind of do you remember uh, ben? ben from yeah. Picklesburg? So Ben yeah. had given us this sign, He's and a so fan as well as he Jeff just also. recited our sweeps to us. <laughs> <laughs> so don't go to bed yet. Don't go yes. to bed yet. You could oh. use that chair, Monica. So, yeah. That's ben, feel free. Thank you so much for introducing us to Open Up Pittsburgh. We're really excited to talk to Marissa and April to find out a little bit more. Do you want to introduce them? Well, Say welcome, Marissa and April. W okay, welcome, Marissa and April. All right. Yeah. Thank you, nice. Ben. Thank you, Ben. That was awesome. And hey, well, Monica. Well, perfect timing. Monica. It was literally perfect timing because we were like, do you know who also works with us here? So <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here you go. Here's a microphone. Oh, thank you. Yeah, sure. Is mic? I love mic. <laughs> All right. Coming in from music. Okay. Coming in from music. All right. Yes. Cool. Uh, it's weird now. I don't have to let. <laughs> I feel so lost with that. All right. <laughs> thank uh, God for Monica. All right. So, listen, Howie's chilling us all, right? Right. Yeah. I love I that. I mean, like, hit the nail on the head it was like mr rogers neighborhood like very soothing yeah. very calm very I felt like, like when inclusive. you used to watch the kind of the like he was walking through the neighborhood that's what i was thinking yeah. like i was waiting for mr McFeely you don't have the shoes for it to yeah come through because ben <laughs> seems to have a lot of pool at this yes. place like oh yes. yeah i just scheduled <laughs> he does have McFeely a lot of pool at this here. place yeah. ladies what we loved finding out is that ben literally found out about this from his love for music and told you ladies and how awesome to be able to tell your story not that we're anything amazing but the fact that more pittsburghers could find out about this place just fills my heart because you're doing great things here how long have you been here with open up pittsburgh marissa is the founder so okay yeah. <laughs> thanks april um so we've been uh open up pittsburgh since 2014 and we started with a yoga in schools program uh then and then we've expanded since then and now we have a lot of community programming we have teacher training um, we partner with a lot of corporations and a lot of other nonprofits in the area and we've been in this space in lawrenceville since 2020 and you're the executive director and co-founder. Yes, that's Who right. Who did you co-find with? Uh, so there's two other co-founders, Megan Sicari and Tessa Carroll. Okay. So was it initially that, like, like you said, the space defined in a unique area to kind of do your thing? Yeah, so... Can you say that one more time? Yeah, so like the space, <laughs> why Lawrenceville, essentially? Oh, yeah, so Lawrenceville is just such a really welcoming community, and yes. there are a lot of other nonprofits concentrated in this yep. area. Uh, it's also, I think, in the United States, one of the most concentrated uh, areas of women-owned businesses. Really? Yeah, so there was I just a lot of opportunity here um, to connect with the community, to establish ourselves, and we've really been welcome here, and we really like working in this space. Yeah, so awesome. do you, you teach yoga here, or just other instructors? Yeah, so um, I do not teach yoga. April is a yoga instructor. We have yoga classes, strength, we do improvisational theater Dance. games dance and okay. live music we have dance parties that are mm -hmm. super fun and that so, grew like i'm sorry no, that ahead. grew since you started kind of thing like yeah. you came in with one sort of concept one thought and it's it's just grown for eight years right it's grown and it's had its hiccups because sure. covid graced humanity <laughs> <laughs> right and so um we became re really creative with the programming 
And so um, we did a lot of things online, virtually. We are n just kind of now able to get back into schools. We're going to be working with McKees and Stowe Rocks and some oh, programming. Right. Cool. Wow. Nice. We're in Baldwin School District. We're okay. in the local school district. And then here, we're able to, you know, we do yoga teacher training for people because we center everything around those with disabilities. Because when we, we always say we have radical hospitality and when we teach that to our community, everybody understands that and the intersectionality of humanity. You know, those with disabilities aren't just white Americans, you know, yep. we are all different shapes, all different colors, and everyone ends up having a disability at some time, you know, mm -hmm. if it's even for on our deathbed, point. Yeah. everyone's going to have a disability. Yeah. And so being able to present that in, in this community and ab abroad um, is really great. And so we've been able to expand our programming based on that. And now that the world's opening up a little bit, we have a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. So I see two opportunities for John here. If you don't mind me oh, taking boy. over here. <laughs> oh, I don't mind. One, I need some kind of dance move for the David Allen Fashion Show. I oh, should probably uh, come here for some April, kind of April, good luck. <laughs> it's about 20 seconds. The other okay. thing is, is that if you looked at me and I asked you to send me some your favorite yoga videos so I could learn them. I knew he was going to ask that. Yeah, he's been asking. We do some work at a uh, community um, what is it? A retirement community in Scott Township. And they have a full wellness program. And he said, could you please send me some yoga videos? And they keep sending him like sit and be fit. Chair. And he's like, chair yoga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get my hair. My hair okay. is great. And he's my very offended. So if they you could give him something. They keep sending me chair yoga videos. <laughs> and listen, I'm trying to figure out yoga. And I lay on my floor and I look at my TV. So I feel like I'm doing an extra yoga move because I'm trying to twist You're my like neck. like Shavasana to... television. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I, I, I need that. But yeah, I just wanted to make sure you wouldn't send me chair yoga videos. Yeah, yeah well, a really cool thing about Open Up is that we meet people exactly where they are. So we do ah. we do offer chair yoga, but chair yoga can actually be pretty strenuous sometimes, depending yeah. on what you're looking for. I saw you were offended. Yeah. You're like, yeah. there's nothing wrong yeah, yeah. with chair yeah, yoga. Right. There's chair certainly yoga. nothing wrong with but my mom is 80 and she does Yeah, that. good so for her. I'm, I'm Go mom. mom. Yeah, right. so like, I wanted something a little bit more active. But we do have a beard. YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and, okay. and that's why we have our wonderful interns, and we have some other people who have really been helping us. Um, we have a lot of compilation videos. So, John, we can meet you where you are. <laughs> we have a video library. We can send it to you. Megan is in a lot of the videos. Um, we have staff. So we, we stand up, sit down, roll around, and do everything. Colton's been doing some yoga videos. Yeah, we definitely have everything, whether you're looking to break a sweat or learn how to relax. Actually, April is one of our instructors, and there are some times where we have hour-long to two-hour-long classes on how to rest and relax because really? a lot of people just don't really yes. give that to themselves or take the time to really like mm. sit and relax and rest so we do anything from breaking a really strong sweat to just like learning how to chill out and take some deep breaths you need the route 28 yoga move <laughs> I, know I hear you <laughs> breathe and meditate yeah. Yeah. keep your eyes open though keep your eyes open on 28 don't fall coming up with the drift. programming though or is it because you've is it sort of trial and error you had a couple of different groups come in and you focused on yoga in general and then you realized oh there's a niche for relaxation or there's a niche for is, is that sort of how it works yeah so i'm gonna let april take this after i kind of intro yeah. it but yeah. uh we really since we're a community-based organization we are a nonprofit and we serve the community, we uh, provide classes for what people are looking for. So a lot of times our classes launch from what people are asking for. So for example, we might have a group of seniors who want yoga with American Sign Language and we will start a class like that for wow. them. We work with Bike Pittsburgh to have a class for cyclists and we focus on a woman non-binary group in, uh, with Bike Pittsburgh. And then we have all kinds of different programming which we launch in with affinity groups. So maybe April can talk a little bit about yeah, that. Um John, <laughs> just so you know, I'm not out of this group either, but we even had uh, an affinity group of AARP. We had a partnership with them <laughs> to teach class. Listen, I'm there. No, but um, we definitely, yeah, we've, we've listened to the community mm. and we center everything around mindfulness. We center everything on this idea that if you're able to settle your nervous system, you have capacity to move in different ways. And so we um, have had partnerships with Lululemon Pittsburgh and Lululemon corporate office. And when a lot of the atrocities that were happening with black Americans were like, okay, there should be an affinity group for that. Mm -hmm. um, the, the deaf yoga class, when I tell you 
That is the chattiest, most funnest <laughs> class. Uh. I love that class. And and they come. We do um, a Sunday safe spaces where we're trying to be like you guys. We're sitting here admiring this podcast situation because we're like, <laughs> one day. But we bring people together who um, are disabled, who are in wheelchairs, who are physically disabled. And we let them have their voice. And we let them have their voice and speak. Like, I loved when Ben said, I feel safe. Me too. Yes. Uh, it, I, it, it hits my heart, right? It yeah. completely yeah. tugs. I, I joke that, you know, I'm menopausal, but... I, Something you hear something like that, and to be sitting here, you feel it when you're here, and you don't even have a class going on right now. Yeah. So the fact that you touched one person who can say, "I feel safe," I mean, kudos to you because and, it makes me want to come here. Right, and that's what we want to do. Like you know, you're, you're, even your group, you you jag off. Look I'm a Californian. Well Look at I'm you. Learning. Well I'm learning done. from you. David Highfield doesn't even say it. Yeah, David Highfield screws it up. He every still time. sounds Russian when he says it. <laughs> <laughs> but our intention is, and our understanding is, you, you learn best in, in your native tongue, in, in your native culture. You learn best That's right. and you feel comfortable in that way. And then from that platform, you can take it out into the world and fully express who you are and be who you are. So that's what we're talking about here with affinity groups and, and giving programming that meets everyone where they are and, you know, get us moving and, and just being healthy. Now, are you both from Pittsburgh originally? She's California. Native California. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually from Buffalo, New York, and then I grew up outside of Boston. I'm going there okay. today. Oh, are you? No, I'll say <laughs> so, hi to your fam. Yeah. <laughs> so do you, did you find Pittsburgh welcoming to your ideas or is it, you know, because this we is always want to know question. that yeah. we've been on committees mm. where is Pittsburgh welcoming to various types or of how do we either, get better? Yeah. yeah. And, and are we welcoming? Did you find Pittsburgh That's welcoming? Question. Oh, she's well, in I, one nothing, John. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it first. Okay. Um, so I, I love Pittsburgh and I also live in Lawrenceville. We have this business in Lawrenceville and I found it to be very supportive as a woman who is an entrepreneur and I find the um, nonprofit space to also be very supportive. We are in a city where we have one of the highest concentrations of nonprofits right. and mm -hmm. also of philanthropic institutions. Right. So there is a lot of opportunity um, for people to to access those things. However, I do think there are major, major strides within the, the equity and the accessibility yeah. um, that people have to that, that that certainly has room to improve. But I think that um, kind of advocating for that and voicing that, um, I do see changes happening. Yeah, I came in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, there was this Mar Marcella Shell, Big oh, yeah. Boom. Yes. So my family moved here then mm -hmm. and um, it was, it, 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 it's an interesting dynamic here. I moved to the South Hills and people are like, oh, you are. I didn't know people didn't cross bridges. Like, <laughs> I learned so much about yeah. Pittsburgh. But, you know, my three children are the only brown children in their school district. Mm -hmm. You know, that's evolved a little bit. Um, so I will say I've had great experiences. I think I've moved to Pittsburgh at a really good time. Mm. Um, good I often do get like, you're not from here, are you? Um, and I think I came at a really good time because I feel a sense of um, progressiveness has really like infiltrated the city. Okay. And even, you know, in the South Hills, what I did before, I think the nonprofit space has definitely opened up and even, you know, the, the private sector. Yeah. So um, I just think I don't know what it was before 2012. And mm -hmm. in my mind, I had some ideas and some stereotypes. It's a steel mill town right. and it's smoky and dusty and smoggy. Mm -hmm. I'm from California. It's smoggy, but we had the beach. Um, <laughs> but I have seen a lot of people, Pittsburghers, opening up. Like I was telling you, when we partner with other townships, mm -hmm. um, it, I just see a burgeoning of um, ideas mm -hmm. and, and an opening up. That's great good. to hear. It's good to hear. It well, makes us happier. And we want to be a part of that. We want it to continue to be more welcoming and more inclusive. And places like this are the way to go. It is, yeah. It's truly heartwarming. Yeah. I appreciate we, it. Uh, yeah, thanks we for having us. We typically go, sometimes we go to eat food. We drink some beer for our podcast. And we learn about those things. But yeah, this has been... <laughs> I like that's where and, we're going next. But <laughs> this... Yeah, you're probably saying, why won't we invite yeah. you to that one, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I love the fact that we could sit and learn from you all. So that's that's really or to the tell cool other part. people that yeah. it exists because spread the word. you know that you know even walking by as you said perception. Oh, it's a cool yoga place. But when you find out that there's so much more, talk a little bit about the improv piece because I find that oh to be really interesting. How that kind of incorporates so much fun. Yeah, yeah. And um, I do want to mention we we pop up all over the place too. Yeah, we actually yeah. started as a place that pops up all over the city. So mm -hmm. and and outside of the city as well. But 
We, um, so our improv is kind of woven into everything that we do. Yeah. Our teachers, our, all our yoga teachers are trained in improv. Um, our strength training, uh, there's improv involved in, in that. And when we have dance parties, we also incorporate improv into there. So um, then we also have standalone improv classes. Um, and then we do some classes where people will build uh a performance together yeah. over like a, a course of eight weeks or so. Um, so we just really find that improv is also really tuned into mindfulness and just dropping into the moment, kind of creating that safe space, finding your voice, stepping into that like leadership role and honestly just like rooting yourself in joy and fun. Mm -hmm. um, we really believe that when people kind of laugh and move together and talk together, there are relationships that are built and community is built. And we find that that kind of like expands outward just from one person I mean even Ben coming I was in just as an internship say, yeah. now we have like 10 yes. people in here who are yeah, kind of learning about some right. new things and connecting and hopefully we'll but see but isn't that soon. how we knew because you had a dance party with Q92.9 yeah. I think that's literally <laughs> yeah like, Ben made a playlist how it all kind yeah. of came yeah. 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 And yeah. We have, like one of our founders uh, Tessa <laughs> is really big on improv Chris has come and is teaching improv Tessa Actually, yes Tessa Carroll oh yeah. wait oh, I'm thinking of Tessa, Tessa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have it, on tomorrow we actually have a music and improv um, program tomorrow so, where it's live interactive music so you guys come on down i would love to i'm in buffalo remember oh yeah yeah, yeah. talking to her i would family. totally <laughs> it's so much fun but also when we talk about acceptance and understanding that there is fluidity in everything right um improv you know welcomes that so you know somebody does something off character that you're not used to you're like oh my god okay yeah, well am it? i coming this yeah, way yeah right right <laughs> yes and yes yeah i think yes, that's yes. really important too when you're centering people with disabilities because sometimes things uh, like if you come here and you're expecting a traditional yoga class you will get pieces of that sure. mm -hmm. but you For also sure. might experience some big movements some big noises some big behaviors yeah. that you might not be familiar with and i think having that kind of like ability to laugh and and move along with what is happening and really tune into your environment and the people that you're around i think that's a really great opportunity to kind of practice these mindfulness things in a different way nice. yeah. Gosh, right. i love before when we, we learn you, so much before we ask you the question of the day oh. we uh, just tell <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, I love tell it. us where does everybody find out more online Ooh, so I'm super excited. We actually are just in the process of relaunching our website. So our website is changing to open-up.org. So you can go to open-up.org. Um, we're on Instagram, mm -hmm. we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. And if you're on any of those, you can find us at openuppgh. Um, you can also email us on our from our website. You just can, our first name and then yeah. openuppittsburgh.org. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it'll, it'll make it to us. Nice, yeah. nice. I love it. Thank you so much for educating yeah. us. I'm so happy that we came. Yeah. All right, question of the day. Okay. <laughs> because I literally love Lawrenceville. Favorite Lawrenceville location, other than Open Up Pittsburgh. Favorite oh. place to go in Lawrenceville. Give it a shout out. Okay. Oh, I have so many. I know. I'll well, tell you. I, okay. Go ahead. No, you go. You go. It's your, it's your question. Well, today I'm going right next door to Una Biologica. That's a good one. Yes. It's a woman-owned business, mm -hmm. and I love her shea butters. And then I'm thinking of, like, calling my partner and like meet me at Walters because they have really good food. Okay. Fair enough. How about you, Marissa? Oh man. Um, so well home because I live here. <laughs> she, she, she literally lives. Yeah. Down. She There's her house. Tell everybody no, yeah, lives. no, but, um, <laughs> I love going to, oh my gosh, there's just so many, so places. many places. Yeah, mm. I like going to 11th Hour, um, which is a brewery right behind here. I do love, I love a good beer. Um, I love going to Arsenal Park. It's so nice to have a park right right there. And um, then I also love, on Fridays, I do a food distribution with Lawrenceville United. And I yes. love going to that because it's really great to see people coming together and yeah. being in that little You're such space. women. You grouped six things in one because you, you <laughs> wanted to make sure you hit them all. <laughs> That's like that was rule. good. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. my rule. You guys hit it. No, I love it. Thank you so much. We appreciate you both, Marissa Thank and April. You. Thanks for having us. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Coming up next, we're going to talk to Libby Power about nope. what is this? No. Libby's not coming. Oh, Libby's not okay. watching. See, see Facebook. That's why you need to watch this. Improv. Go, right there, yeah. 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 Say, John, follow the notes. <laughs> I'll take it from there. <laughs> coming up next. Lainey. <laughs> That All was right. perfect. Awesome. Thank All right, cool. So Thank much. you. That was amazing. And Thank this you. is where we'll put a clip of your music in, just in between. Uh, yeah. We, you don't need to. We, we, all, we got it. I know, right? We try not to make you work, music. unless you want right? to. It's totally up to you. But we try not to make Whatever, the musicians right? work too hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I love learning like this. This is the kind of stuff it's all made of, right? Right, Sorry I didn't give you the cue that Libby wasn't coming. That's she okay. told me. That's all right. No, that's all right. You're fine. No, we're good. All right. So coming in for music. All right. So the next guest is responsible. If this was a scratch and sniff podcast, <laughs> you would know why I'm so hungry right now for French toast, cinnamon, French toast, and maple that syrup. It. I don't But that's what it reminds me. I'm so hungry right now because our next guest brought all of this As stuff. a treat. Do you know why? No. Because... So here's the deal. Lainey Davis is an author, and uh, she was coming on to talk about her books, and she said, oh, here's my little goodie bag for you. And I was like, wonder what could be in there. Clearly books. There were books, but there were amazing little stickers. Those were tattoos. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> like, Get it together, <laughs> Renebeck. Read the notes. Um, <laughs> read the notes. It's in your script. Um, Bath bomb. But I don't know if that's what you're what? smelling more or if this or the candle. They have the, the, they have the, the same, same scent. This one's the called the me. Regal Stag, and it goes with my Stag Brothers books. So, and but the, the cool part was the, the care package was yeah. all for reading, for comfort. and Yeah, you could read that in the bath. Reading. So now, John, you can get a bath, light your candle, and read your book. Right. <laughs> he will do right. none of that, but I might. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I have so many things against having a bath. Oh, yes. I know John's yeah. not a bath Well, you could put you could put on a temporary tattoo. You don't need a bath for that. Oh, all right. Yeah. Put on a tag. I, I got see. you. <laughs> so, Lainey, I think we had a similar engagement as far as Picklesburg because you reached out to us. Um, yeah. Was it via the? We have two authors. Were you Picklesburg or were you? You reached out on our website. I reached out via the website. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because I was like, wait, did we meet you at Picklesburg? Because maybe that's why you look so familiar. She's a very familiar Pittsburgh face, by the way. I did go to Picklesburg. There you go. Yeah. That's the connection. Everybody <laughs> went to Picklesburg. There you go. There, did you see his sign? I can't remember. I was there in the rain with my three yeah. sons trying okay. to get pickle pins. So. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Understood. So tell us a little bit about yourself. You're not originally from Pittsburgh, but you've no, been here long yeah, enough I to moved appreciate here. It. I moved yeah. here in 2005 for graduate school, and we love Pittsburgh and stayed. And I started out with a day job in communications, and we had a ice dam on the roof. Okay. And I needed money real fast. And my friend said, why don't you just write some... Uh, steamy novels and sell them on Amazon. Like literally that was the conversation. I have an MFA from Pitt. That's okay. what I was here to do. And I am a writer in my day job, just usually nonfiction and more news type and stuff. And not steamy love right. romances. <laughs> and I said, oh, I couldn't do that. And my friend said, why? Yeah. And so it started out as a side hustle um, to pay for the roof repair. And I wanted to self-publish because I knew I could do it at my own pace quickly because sure. traditional publishing, it could take 18 months to two years so hmm. and I needed that roof money so you know um what a hustle go yeah, ahead yeah. yeah and then so then it started working out people started really buying the books and I was able to leave my day job in June of last year so I'm I well, love stories like uh, that yeah this is so buying the books online wait I need a roof so I'm gonna start yeah. <laughs> right we need a romance <laughs> novel about a driveway worker oh, Lord. Yeah. So uh, so they bought the books online. You had a website or your friends bought them? How did this? Yeah, I sell. I'm on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, you could Kobo, okay. um, Apple Books, everywhere books are sold. The paperbacks, I'm not doing as much with paperbacks because paper is so expensive right now. So yeah. I, I, you can buy them and I'll get like 40 cents of the <laughs> of whatever ah, you gotcha. pay. But for gotcha. the ebooks, yeah, yeah. Um, and the, the e-book market, people were really hungry for feel-good fiction during mm. pandemic. Yeah. And I was selling a lot of books. Listen, so. Lainey, the first thing is I'm going to say is, first, first of all, kudos to you. Thank right. You. Second of all, I really want to know, this is not a joke, what's the age group of the people that purchase your books? Because I... I'm 46-year-old women. <laughs> my, the third yeah. thing I'm going to say is if I go to my mom and she goes, your aunt gave me some, me, oh, gave me some books to read and this is it, I'm going to go, oh, mom, stop. stop. <laughs> but in the meantime, so really, what is the demographic <laughs> for yeah, your book? Yeah, I, I don't really know, okay. but I can tell you the age groups of people who click on my ads on Facebook. Yeah. And that is people in their 30s-ish okay. and then people over 65. 
That's the part I was thinking. Well, like, I'm neither, yeah. but I'm going to read it anyway. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. the part I was thinking because as I tend to see just uh, because of some populations that I see with my mom is that the population of 65 and older mm-hmm. seem to be very into the Roman. My, same, my well, they too. have a lot of spare time because yes. they're yeah. not working anymore. Yes. But we are seeing just like genre wide a real resurgence. And I think a lot of that's coming from TikTok and Instagram because people are holding up their paperbacks yes. um mm. so you know obviously i'm hoping to appeal to readers of all ages over yeah. 18 <laughs> right right um well listen yeah. here's my question sure. i am i'm sort of a writer i wrote for newspapers for a while before mm-hmm. i got into the Ajaga podcast and my question is as a writer what made you choose that type of writing i get it you're fr- i love the the you know mm-hmm. how organic it was that your friend was like how about this type but how yeah. were you did you read those type of books prior so it sort of made sense that that's mm-hmm. because how do you really know that niche to follow so there are two answers to that first is that my mom was a huge romance okay fan. and up until the Kindle came out, she would be just buying like duplicate copies because sure. she read so much she forgot what she had. So I just got mm-hmm. into reading too. all my mom's stuff. And okay. I was like way into Outlander and Discovery of Witches. And so I was a fan of the romance genre. Um, I've just listed like fantasy romance, but I also have read a lot of contemporary stuff too. And I knew that it is the most lucrative genre. And so when I started this, it was with a specific purpose, which was to replace the roof. Um, but it's, it's that's it's, the best part of yeah. the story, really. But it's really fun to it's really fun to write in this genre. I love to read in this genre. It's a genre that centers women. You know, it's not just that women are getting a romantic happily ever after. Usually their career aspirations and their friendship goals are I was are just going to say, I met. think that the storyline, so to speak, mm-hmm. has changed tremendously from our mom's books, right? Yes. We, the women were portrayed more then, from what I remember reading, uh, as like, oh, the damsels. And it's not like that anymore, yeah. right? Well, and my tagline is kind of not your mama's body right. rippers because yes. a contemporarily written romance not necessarily set contemporary but anything written kind of more recently will um really make consent explicit and um you'll get Hmm. to see a lot about the female characters thought processes and um yeah i I just think that some of that stuff has changed for the better in romance yeah now do you go to work go to now people know you do this Mm -hmm. right go to work go to parties and people go like wow and do they start to look for advice because they think you're now like an advice columnist (laughs) right like all the your your creativity so i do get those kind of questions sometimes but i think i think a lot of it is still just people wanting to understand how somebody with a graduate degree and a day job and three sons gets into writing steamy romance novels um i get it all the time yeah (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. why is she doing that podcast (laughs) i'm just kidding yeah that is amazing and i it's such a good example of follow what you love right Mm -hmm. i mean so you were kind of like hey i'm gonna try this as a side hustle Mm -hmm. to for a reason and then it yeah. turned out to be we what We paid you do. off the roof, yeah. and I was still really enjoying it. Um, my first series that really started taking off is my Stag Brothers series. This is book one of that, yeah. Sweet Distraction. And I wrote a story for all three brothers. They live in Highland Park, and readers started to message me like, I think... The other day, I imagined I saw them out jogging by the fountain, and I love that. That's so awesome. Yeah. Because you, I don't, again, as a younger reader, I always pictured, you know, I'm very proximity challenged, so forgive me for this, but places like California Mm -hmm. and, you know, just more magical, but the fact that you could actually place it in Pittsburgh and actually have them kind of think. I did try a few books set in a fictional place and it was too hard to like make up. You have to make up a map. And so it's just easier for me to set everything here. And I think I mentioned in my email when I Mm -hmm. produce my audiobooks, I have a local narrator so she can really nail the accent. And I love that. Yeah. 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 And I have, um, you know, my cover designers from here and all I, I try and really just weave Pittsburgh into every element of my Lenny Davis business. For this place, at least from the ebooks or data you have, yeah. for this place, someone's purchased your book from? Oh, gosh. I mean, everywhere. Because 
So, for example, my books are up on Google Play, and they really emphasize uh, a global okay, audience. Yeah. yeah. So I get so I have readers in Australia. I have readers in Sri Lanka. I wonder what they think of our accent, huh? Oh, I don't know. You um, totally I just up with I just that. got like, a royalty statement today, and yeah. last month I sold a dollar sixty eight worth of books in Japan. Okay. So <laughs> that's with the conversion rate, which is terrible right now. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. that is this is that's so such a cool story. Cool. These are the stories that the Jagat podcast are made of. I'm not kidding it's no, so I cool agree. to hear something like that yeah, it's, Lainey it's thank you so much where can everybody find you or means mm-hmm. to purchase the book yeah I'm online laineydavis.com so that's l-a-i-n-e-y davis d-a-v-i-s um, and my books are everywhere books are sold Amazon Barnes and Noble Apple Google Kobo there's a romance specific website called Eden Books like the Garden of Eden mm-hmm. I'm on there Fuck and let's not you. forego what you thought when we first started is that you're selling an experience you're not selling the book you're yeah. you brought that's the a candle, great point you brought yeah. the soap you brought the tattoos you well that you, was a brief that was like a one-off experience okay. so i i but how smart i kind of mentioned my kid's school was closed for like six weeks last winter for covid so there was there's a soap and candle maker whose kids are at my school and we were both not working we created this experience together. Great. It was a Mother's right. Day package. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's great. I love it. And Keep then the minute it. the kids were back in school, you're like, Let's gotta go write use a book now. Then you need yeah. alcohol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Lainey, yeah. thank you so much. Question of the day is, okay. and I love that you're not from Pittsburgh either, so you can kind of tell us your thoughts on Lawrenceville. And let's see, are you gonna throw six places in one like the other ladies did, or is there a particular place in Lawrenceville that you absolutely love? When you're coming through, you say, "Oh, I have to stop at." So, I mean, my husband and I really fell in love at Belvedere's mm. um, back when you could just roller skate in there and drink pounders of PBR. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, right. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. I was just talking about um, John is going to the vegan um, festival later, the oh, vegetarian yeah. thing. And I said B52 was my favorite place that when I worked in Their coffee is so and strong. And now All it's moms gone. should drink. Yeah. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, oh, they just man. closed a couple months. Yeah, so, it's oh, super they so now I need a new coffee. favorite place, but now I have 12 that I can pick from. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, I love it. I love Lawrenceville. I love all these amazing Pittsburgh neighborhoods, and I'm glad we can feature them. Lainey, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks. All right. And so we're going to hear a little bit more music, and then we're actually going to talk to Howie Alexander, who made the music, and Scott Hanley from Scott Hanley from WZUM. Cool. All right, cool, cool, cool. And we have a surprise up, at guys. the end. All right, guys, come on over. You'll need to bring an extra chair. Yeah, if you want to bring your chair. So if you're watching behind the scenes, again, you can find the Jagoff podcast wherever you get podcasts or just go to yajagoff.com every Tuesday and hit the play button and listen to the podcast while you work. Or you can go to the Q92.9 personality page for Jagoff on Q and listen to the podcast there. So we good? I think we're good. All right, good. Uh, do we need le- levels from them at all, Monica? We good? All right, cool. All right. You're Welcome, good. guys. So good to see you. Good Likewise. to see you, too. Thanks for we having We appreciate me. you coming on. So I know it's a little crazy because, as we know, you're performing a double today, right? Yeah. In the, as we say in the biz. Mm-hmm. So we appreciate that you're giving a little bit of time to come here. But it is so important to John and I that we feature local musicians because... Pittsburgh is a breeding town for musicians, but I feel like we just don't get the accolades we deserve. Do you agree? Uh, I, I do believe that. In, okay. in music and in football. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, I got gotcha. you. You're a big football. Are you a Stillers fan? Absolutely. Okay. Like, Absolutely. is it? We have to be, right? Yeah. 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 You have to be. That's yeah. what I thought. That's what I thought. And so, Scott, welcome as well. So, Thank you. Tracy <laughs> does this amazing thing where she will bring, you know, she'll say, how about this? We'll give her a bullpen of guests you know, musicians and things like that. But then sometimes it's like, we don't know everything that's happening. And so she says she got in touch with you. How, what does this, what's this duo? You, well, we're, we're not, a, not duo, a duo. Although, I, I am a singer, but this is not for I me know. singing, but I'm also the manager of the Pittsburgh Jazz Channel, WZUM. Back in the day, I used to be the manager of WDUQ, yeah. which was what brought me to town back in 95 when I first met Howie, when he was not long out of high school. That, oh, that, get that, out that, of that, town. That's a while ago. But now, Howie, you're from here? Yes, born and raised. Born and raised. Yeah, I'm from Michigan. So. Uh, Blackridge, actually. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I knew you were not from here. That's why we went with the, the local first, because we didn't want people to boo you, Scott. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. You certainly have done so many things for Pittsburgh as well. Well, it, it's been an interesting ride, but uh, what's been really fun in the last few years is getting the, the jazz station going and uh, having artists like Pit, uh, like Howie Alexander performing on the scene. Yeah. And as the station has evolved and become more engaged in that scene, the scene has also been getting more engaged. Yes. And we're at a point now where there's 250 or 260 jazz gigs 
gigs going on every month. Wow. Some of them are international acts tour, touring, but a lot of them are people like Howie playing at clubs on a typical Friday or Saturday night. There's 12 or 15 different things to choose from wow. in the jazz scene alone. Has so that, go ahead. Well, I know we're both going to have. No, so you're saying there are, I don't even know this, there are jazz clubs where I could go just chill out and, and every, every Friday or Saturday just go, I could pick a jazz club to go to. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Wow. Go to WZUM.org and click yeah. on Jazz Central. It's our calendar that we curate. And we're in close connection with all the musicians. So when there's a substitution, they're Facebooking me or they're texting me to let me know that somebody else is going to be on keyboard or bass or whatever. Okay. But, but we want to make sure that people are connected, that the musicians are connected, the clubs are connected, and the audiences are connected. Because really, jazz in this town is a community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, is, which is unlike many other communities that also have jazz performers. And Howie is not only a performer, but he's also a teacher and has been training a lot of the next generation of musicians mm -hmm. uh, at, at various institutions around town yeah and that was going to be my question to you and that was a great explanation because you're right I think that first of all music gets just lumped into music sometimes because we're not known like Nashville or one of those other cities that it's like oh they derive from here but we could list how many people who literally came from Pittsburgh in different genres right mm -hmm. so I think step one is we have to make sure people know more of the fact that we are a music town but number two that th we can get so you know niche as to say there are jazz clubs. Like the fact, you know, what you, you don't know what you don't know, that there's an actual specific jazz club. Or my question to you was going to be, how has jazz essentially evolved? It's been around forever. People say I'm a jazz enthusiast. But did people really appreciate jazz, or how has the love of it grown from when you started, when he met you, to now? Oh, my honest answer is yes. I don't know no, if it's I've, grown. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I don't know well, if it's, I don't know if it's, I really don't know if it's shrunk. Okay. Okay. Pits, Pittsburgh is such a small sample. Okay. You know, um, we're very fortunate to have the musicians that we have here. And we have a very high bar for the, the standard of le the level of, of jazz that's played here. Is that we're, right? What we're expecting. I imagine that the audience expect a certain level of mm. playing. I mean, you, we met, I mentioned, you mentioned Mr. Rogers earlier. What I played earlier sounded like the great Johnny Costa. Yes. I wish. Yeah. I only have 61 <laughs> keys. He's got 61 fingers. Right? <laughs> so, like... <laughs> But uh, yeah, the, the scene here is, uh, it, it's very, very good. I think when COVID hit and people couldn't go out, they didn't realize that they didn't have access to live music and how important live music was. And one thing about the jazz community here is we weren't going to have any of that nonsense. <laughs> the jazz musicians, uh, myself included, would be playing outside of certain uh, some of the jazz clubs around town, Conalma, for instance, in Shadyside. We, oh, yeah. we were playing outside the club on the street and people would set up their chairs across the street, social distancing, yeah, across the street and ride, you know, the 71C would just ride by. <laughs> and then, you know, that's where you just take a break. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but <laughs> drum solo, or <laughs> as the bus goes by. But uh, no, so the, the jazz community was very diligent in, in, in keeping jazz alive during the pandemic. And I, th I think more than any other city, because I would brag to my other friends who lived in Cleveland and New York how they weren't gigging. How I was like, I got two gigs on Wednesday. Wow. wow. In the middle of the pandemic. You figured it out. Oh, we were, yeah, we were yeah. yeah we, we figured it out here. And because of that resilience, like when things started to clear up now, people are like, oh, I got to get out and hear live music because I remember what it was like when there wasn't any, yeah. Yeah. you know, and that means a lot to us as musicians. Sure, sure. And even during that time, the Club Conalma in Shadyside on Ellsworth Avenue, small place, well, the, the ownership of that club saw an opportunity when a, a restaurant in downtown Pittsburgh across the street from Heinz Hall was closing because the owner passed away and this, the play, place wasn't continuing. They opened up Konalma downtown, which mm -hmm. seats three times as many people right. mm -hmm. and is busy six days a week, twice on Sundays, mm -hmm. and uh, does late shows now till one in the morning on Fridays and Saturdays. I'll be there it's tonight. getting close. Yeah, and Howie will be there. And, and also, and that, and that club's uh, <laughs> group uh, actually has a new CD out that Howie has tracks on uh, called State of Mind. It was all recorded during COVID. Wow. wow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 we can have our wild thing. <laughs> but that's so great. And that's just four sets of the really good working groups in Pittsburgh. And, and there's, a, there's generations of people playing together from Don Alico uh, Sr., uh, who is in his 90s, uh, to players in their teens right now actively playing in clubs and at venues all over town. Wow. What's the appeal for jazz for a young person versus, you know, someone who might want to get into something else, reggae, hip-hop, 
um, big band, you know? Well, from an educator's point of view, since I, I te I'm the artistic director at the Afro-American Music Institute yep. in Homewood. So uh, I can't give you a young person's expect, uh, sure. perspective because I'm 47. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're close, bro. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but what I try to tell them is that jazz music was always played and recorded by young people. Like even though, you know, Miles Davis, you know, yeah. might have been like you know, 75, you see a picture of him. All those fantastic, all those, those those monumental albums were recorded when he was 22 and, you know, yeah, right. 19, you know, like 22 year old artists now are like trap music artists, you know what I mean? Sure, <laughs> sure. Or like, you know, or, 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 or dub set or whatever. But like, the music's always been young people's music. So when I'm teaching music, I always push that. It's always been young people's music. So I'm never surprised when I see young people out because the music has young energy. Mm. So you'd be 90. Right. That's why you can be like Don Alico Sr. in 95 out here playing it because it's timeless and it has young people's energy in it. Yeah. I'd like to follow yeah. up the question in that when I think of rap music, uh, I think how it's progressed. It, rap music today does not sound like it did 10 years ago. Rock music today doesn't sound like it did. Right. How it, has jazz evolved or is just jazz? That's a really good always, question, yeah. Has it always been evolving? So it just it still is what it is. Uh, yeah, all music evolves. Yeah. Uh, there, there are music styles that exist today that didn't exist mm -hmm. in the 80s. Sure. You know, you, you, didn't have, you didn't have house music until like, after yeah. disco, you know, yeah. but disco had to happen. Yeah. So what am I hearing? Did disco have to happen? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm not a what, disco fan. Yes. What? Or, or Beyonce wouldn't have her number well, one hit okay. right All now, right. Yeah. which is like a house tune, Fair which enough. sounds like disco to me. Yeah, right. I mean, Donna Summer could have put that tune out. No True. doubt. Yeah. So what's different in a jazz mu uh, song today than it was 10 years ago? Is it different? Is it a different instrument keying into that? Is it a tempo? Is it... Just a feel? I don't know. Can we even put or our finger on that? Or is it different genres kind of mel melting? Jazz is very, very, uh, very widespread. It has a very wide. Yeah. Problem, and, you know, like, and I would also say it's, it's of the moment and of the yeah. personalities involved. Yes. One of the really good things about jazz is, is at its best, it is, it is very human and interactive. So mm -hmm. what happens at that given moment is based on the relationships going on on the stage and the relationships with the audience. And I think the best of all music is all like that, but I think jazz is probably at the pinnacle of that level of, of facility with your instrument or your voice and also with being able to improvise with the moment at hand. It's sort of like the epitome of riffing in my, right? Because, but, and I'll, I'll ask the dumb question to either of you. In a jazz song, when I see five people up there, because I, I'll go to the Parkway Theater and McKee's Rocks and, you know, see them all, they, they're all playing. They're just da 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 doing it. It seems like they've rehearsed for 14 days, right? But this guy knows when that lady's going to start and the lady drummer is going to just kind of kick in. How Are you communicating through eyes? Is it the music or is it just... Go ahead. It's pretty easy. Uh, it's all ears. Like, it, it's all, it's all, it okay. should be all ears. Because, well, it's all ears because the, the best musicians are blind. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Right. I mean, think about the it. The gentleman from right. Bellevue, right. the keyboard player. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah, think yeah. of his name. I can't okay. think of his name, but yeah. I know who you Well, I mean, let's, let's start with Stevie Wonder. Oh, I got you. Okay. Okay. So uh, it's just like when you watch uh, a basketball team or a pickup game at a park. Mm. You know, uh, people have different levels of ability, but everybody knows the rules. And sure. somehow that team meshes, yeah. wins mm -hmm. or even dominates the other team, even though, even though they never played together. They all know how to play basketball, mm. well, much as the same way for a jazz trio or combo, okay. you know, or even I've heard that the, the Count Basie big band operated mm. like that. Like nobody really had charts. You just knew what note you were, you mm -hmm. know, but that's another conversation for Dr. Nelson Harrison. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it works kind of the same way. When you okay. see a pickup hockey game or a pickup game, if you know the rules, well, you can play. But right. that comes from years of practice and experience and apprenticeship yeah. mm. because you, you can't really achieve until you've made mistakes yeah. and you have to get better over time and you know there there was legacy back in the day that that jam sessions with jazz musicians could become very very fierce and cutting there was a story in fact a, a saxophonist here in pittsburgh hosea taylor <laughs> wrote a book about how uh, there were so many good players in pittsburgh you could come to a jam session as some big notable world-class jazz artist and someone would come off the back of a of, of a <laughs> of, a, of a junkyard truck and play you off the stage hmm. because they had the skills they put in the time mm -hmm. and and that's probably the traditions in Pittsburgh that there's so many players who are really quite good that you may not with the resurgence of jazz in Pittsburgh is there are people coming out that I haven't seen play in Pittsburgh for 20 years
40s or 50s in some cases, but they just kind of hung it up because there weren't places to play, and now there are. Hmm. I many places. We might have to give up Jazz. our shift at Q92.9 so oh, we can wow. go out between 7 and 10. So and there you have where can everybody find you both so that they can know a little bit more about the jazz world, where to find you perform? Learn uh, how to play a piano or just learn an instrument. You can find me at the Afro-American Music Institute. But, uh, but if you want to come see me play, uh, I'll be at Con Alma tonight at the Pub in Verona and Rock's Landing over in McKee's Rocks across from Roxy. Oh, Sunday nights and Tuesday nights. Every Sunday nights and Tuesday nights. Yeah. We will be there. Sundays you at the mark Roxy my words. Tuesdays yeah. at Genuine Pub. I'm Remember, a lot, of these a lot of these places that have jazz aren't necessarily jazz clubs. Sure. They are, a, right. lot of, a lot of them are red. Wise enough. Smart wise enough. Yeah. yeah. To have jazz. <laughs> okay. You know, so, I love yeah. it. And Scott? Well, and, and for programs with the Man with Manchester Craftsman's Guild that are on the air and also on the website, but especially look. That's where you'll find the listings of all the things going on. We have to update it constantly because there's more and more things that are coming. Click in Howie Alexander and WZOM and you'll find the listings for him. Uh, talk about Howie all the time. That's funny. I love That's that. Awesome. And I would like to take an articulation class under you if you don't mind. Next yeah. to Monica, it's oh the best God. voice that's ever been on the podcast, Holy to be honest with you. Goodness. Oh, wait, wait, Greg Brown is in on the wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, no, podcast. Wow, yeah. No, I appreciate it. Thank you guys me. for making time today. Well, we thanks for inviting us. Question of the day. Where'd you go? Well, I had a coffee in my car. Oh, all right. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great place to be. coffee shop in Marksville yeah. called My Car. Called <laughs> 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 My Car. Um, Oh yeah, yes, I haven't been yes. there. I haven't been there since COVID, but they had some killer wings. They go there all the time. Okay, that's and a good for one. me, I I can't. There's so many have closed now, but Butler, because I actually was that, that was filmed here. Is that right? And my car was you. actually more in the movie than I was. Uh -huh. but, this is but, a car so theme, a pickle and car. Thank you so much. Can we get you to play one more song? Absolutely. Awesome. Right, thank cool. you. We'll say our thank play? yous, and you can. Pod. Whatever line is the longest, we'll take over and put over by your speaker. Listen, nothing against the amazing people. Axelrod, you know, we are, we're so fortunate that we have, you know, Arthur Motes on, or he's just a dear friend. But I love nothing more than our podcasts that are everyday people with everyday stories doing amazing things in our Sappy. I'm a little sappy so, this weekend. So thank you to Ben for inviting us here to open. Yay, Ben! Yay. And Kate. Now through email. And thank you to the folks here at Open Up. Uh, we had a great time, and I am Marissa and April, thank you. We definitely want to stop back. We need to do a jagging around video so that we can learn maybe one mm -hmm. video on that. And then obviously thanks to Lainey Davis. I'm so happy that you reached out because... I'm going to read your book. I promise you. I, like, I, I, it's just inspiring that you want to do it. And I want to self-publish, so I have things to ask you. Yeah. So how cool, right? Yeah, it's super A little self-serving cool. this Thanks weekend. Thanks to uh, Colin and Monica behind the scenes. We yeah. appreciate that. Thanks to Tracy who put it all together. And we have to say thanks to Rory Conda, but Ben is going to say thank you to Rory Conda. Thanks, for, uh, thanks to Zara Conda. Perfect. There you go. But, yeah, and you want to read that? Okay. Do you know what the letters M S R P mean? We shall hear it fast at the end of commercials. But Rory Chanda takes them seriously since it means manufacturers suggested the real price. That means they don't increase car prices to make faster back during a time of inflation. Instead, they sell cars and build relationships with the RoyRichHonda.com for all of your vehicle needs. Oh, he says that so much better than uh, I do. Yeah, yeah, and now, yeah, yeah. now we get to listen to Howie, who we just absolutely adore. And we hear he may be traveling with us to all our podcasts from now on.
good rest of the weekend. We'll the podcast will be out on Tuesday.